Now here's a classic, a fixed knife made by Schrade. This is part of their old timer series. This model is called Sharpfinger. And a lot of you may be familiar with this because it has been around for a very long time. Uh, this knife was already popular in the 70s. I got this knife on Amazon.ca for $17.60 with free shipping included within Canada. HR Knives, a, an online store in the US, has it for $14.82. And they also have a Paka Wood version for $23. Dollars fifty-seven, which interestingly enough says that it has a USA Tang stamp and it also says handles are attached in China. So seems like there are still versions available made in the US, but my guess is that those are earlier ones that simply that they still have in stock, haven't sold. But uh, from what I know, those knives are currently made in China. It also it doesn't say. USA on the knife anymore on the blade. The blade is made of 7CR17 stainless steel which from what I understand is comparable to 440A. So not the most amazing edge retention but definitely usable pretty good and especially at the price range it's a good choice so can't really complain about that. The uh, handle scales are Delrin which is a type of composite plastic, apparently also known as acetyl resin. And as you can see, it has a nice contrast going on here with slight color plus the black. Looks pretty neat. As always, I will post the specifications like length and weight and everything down there in the video description. So check that out, including links to the stores, all the good stuff that you might need. So. Let's talk about the pros and cons of this thing. As you can already see, the, uh, it has a, quite a particular blade shape, which is also what made me want to get this. I just think it's a very beautiful, aesthetically pleasing blade shape. Very, very strongly upswept point. And the nice thing about this blade shape is that with this recurve here going on and the strong belly towards the end, you basically maximize the cutting edge that you get at that length. While the point is actually still in line with the grip. Not that you would use this for thrusting usually. I mean, this is clearly a uh, tool design, you know, EDC knife. Apparently it would also be useful as a skinning knife based on what other people have said. It's not something that I've experienced with, but yeah, makes sense. I really like the, the strong taper here. It tapers to a very fine point. And the nice thing about this point is, you know, even if the, uh, the edge becomes dull, with such a sharp point, you can always use that if you have to, if for some reason you have no, no way to sharpen it in whatever situation, you could still use just the tip to get some cutting or ripping or whatever done. This would still do a pretty good job. Of course, it is very fine, so this is not a knife for really tough cutting tasks. You wouldn't be batoning with this, obviously. But you know, for EDC use and light cutting tasks in general, this would perform pretty well. Whittling should also work quite well with this. You have a number of ways to hold it. And you can place your thumb right there. It doesn't have any jimping, but personally I don't think it needs any. The thumb actually locks in pretty well regardless. It doesn't really slip off too much. And you can I wonder if the name comes from this kind of use, you know, sharp finger. <laughs> you put the, the finger on the back of the spine for fine cutting work. That will make sense. So you can see from the reflection, this is a hollow ground blade, obviously. And let's check out how sharp it is. Some phone book paper here. Very sharp. I like that. Well, I kind of messed that up, but you can still see it cuts this fine paper with ease. That's very nice and sharp. I like that. 
You know, there are way too many knives out there which don't come with a proper edge, but this one definitely deserves the term sharp finger because it is actually sharp when it comes out of the box. So there's no need to touch up the edge. What I also like with the design of the blade here is that you kind of have an integrated guard here. So that prevents your hand from slipping. That's pretty neat. The, the one thing that I'm not too pleased with is the grip here. And look at how beefy that is. That is really freaking thick. You may think, yeah, it's good for guys with larger hands. I don't have very large hands. But, I mean, if you have large hands, you won't be able to grip this in the full length anyway, because it's, the grip is just too short for that. It's pretty much square. You know, it's not, it's slightly rounded off here, but not too much. So you're basically, you have a block, you know, a square block as a grip in terms of cross section. That's not the most ergonomic grip design. That's not very, not very comfortable in the hand. So in my opinion, this would be a lot better if they had made the handle scales thinner for one and also a bit more rounded off here. Which of course you can do yourself, but hey, you, you shouldn't have to, right? It's nice that it has a lanyard hole. Large enough to fit even ungutted paracord through, I would say. And uh, let's take a quick look at the sheath. Very nice leather sheath. This is really stylish. You know, th this is also one of the reasons why I got this. This would look right at home with a steampunk outfit, especially since it has this nice reddish dark brown and it just looks very rustic. Excellent work here. As you can see the stitching is flawless. I have nothing bad to say about that. The, uh, the sheath overall is pretty sturdy, well made. The uh, you know, snap closure here works perfectly fine, no problem. Just one thing that you have to be aware of. With this kind of sheath, of course, when you open it up, you kind of have to push the one flap aside, otherwise it, it will get caught there. Especially since the, uh, the blade has this particular shape that really hooks onto it, so you have to be aware of that, but no big deal, right? Oh, and it has a very generous belt loop, so you will be able to fit most belts through here, I'd wager. So yeah, like I said, the, uh, shall we say, unsophisticated handle shape is the only gripe I have with this. Otherwise, it's, it's a great design. I mean, it looks great. It performs pretty well for light cutting because of the, the way the uh, edge is shaped. Very fine point. You know, overall, just well made. There's no flaw with this, really, other than, in my opinion, the handle, but, you know. Especially at the price, I mean, pff, come on, you really can't go wrong with this. So I would definitely recommend the Sharpfinger.